The last chapter in this section talks about some uh, general logic statements. So let's talk through some definitions on that and see what these uh, four special logic statements are. The first thing I want to talk about is equivalent statements. These are statements that use the same simple statements. We call them usually P and Q. We've been calling them. They end up having the same truth table. So even though they are formulated differently and they sound a little different in the English language, they are actually the same statement. They just look a little different, but logically they're equivalent. The other thing we want to point out is double negation. I think I've said this before, but if you use double negatives, it means in logic that you are back to the original case. Just like in math, if you have minus negative 4, it really means plus 4. And double negation is the same way. My example of this is if someone tells you I ain't no fool, they really mean that they are a fool. So remember that. And then I want you to recall that a conditional statement is of the form if P, then Q. So down in the bottom right, I've got the conditional statement truth table again from the previous sections where we talked about that. And then here are my variations of the conditional statement. These are the, the four big uh, names in logic that we might talk about. So I have the conditional statement just as before. Its symbolic form is P, a right arrow Q. And what we say in English is if P, then Q. We're going to talk about later after we see its truth table whether it's equivalent or not. Then I have the converse. The converse says Q, right arrow P, which means if Q, then P. I flip the order of the sentences around. So if I have my P statement, my Q statement, I put the Q in front and put the P later. Inverse, again, I use my not symbol, not P, right arrow, not Q, and it's if not P, then not Q. And finally, contrapositive, if not Q, then not P. So we're going to look into these statements truth tables, and then we're going to figure out which ones of these are equivalent or not. So let's take these truth tables here and let's find out what we've got going. Again, as always for a truth table, when I'm getting my initial generated values, true, true, false, false, for uh, this and true, false, true, false. So I have every possibility. Then for not P, well, it's going to be false, false, true, true. And for not Q, it's going to be false, true, false, true. Now that I've got my general tables, I can start working out what these logic statements mean. Remember how the conditional works. The conditional works this way. If the second statement is true, then the conditional statement itself is going to work out to be true. If the second statement is false, then the only way that the conditional statement can work out to be true is if the first statement was false. Another way to look at this, if the first statement's false, if you don't satisfy the, the P requirement, then the statement gets to be true, because no matter what I've promised is the second part, you haven't given me the initial part, so I've kept my end of the bargain. The only way, um, if you keep your end of the bargain and make the first part P be true, then I have to hold my part of the bargain, the second part in, to be true. Again, thinking back to that, if you earn a 90% or higher in the course, then I will give you an A. As long as you deliver to me on the first part, which it would be what happens if, that, if you earn a 90% or higher, then I have to deliver for, to you on the second part to give you the A for me to not be a liar. On the other hand, if you don't give me a 90% or higher, then I'm not a liar either way. However, if you don't deliver on the giving me a 90% or higher part, then either way, whether I give you an A or not, I've still kept my end of the bargain, so the statement that I've said is true. The only way the statement can be false is if you deliver me a 90% or higher and I still don't give you an A, then I've broken the bargain, and so that statement was a false statement. So for the first part here, P implies Q, it's just exactly this truth table that we had over here. True, false, true, true. For the Q implies P, well, now we're going backwards, if you will. So if the statement is true, if the first part, the Q part, is true, and that implies that the second part is true, then the whole statement's going to be true. 
On the other hand, if the first statement, which is now Q, is false, again, somebody hasn't delivered on the first part, the Q part, and so that makes the statement true automatically. Same thing down here. If someone hasn't delivered on the first part, we never really get to see if I was going to hold up my end of the bargain on, on the P part. The only time that this statement will be false will be if you start out with a true statement and then somebody doesn't deliver on the second piece. Now let's look at these not situations. Well, I start out with not P. Again, if the first, very first sentence, part of the sentence, this not P part is false, automatically we're going to be getting a true statement out of this. And also, if the first part of the, the first statement is true, and I deliver you a true, that's again true. The only time we're going to have problems is if it's a true statement that's coming out from the beginning, and this gives you a false output, that's when somebody's broken their end of the bargain. For the very last type, the contrapositive here, I've got the Q first and then the P. Again, if the Q's first and I have a false, or if the Q's first and I have a false, you never really get to see whether I was going to hold up my end of the bargain. My statement gets to be true because you didn't hold up your side. It's only when you gave me the first part, you gave me the not Q part, which is the first part of the contrapositive, and then I failed to deliver on the P part that we get to talk about things being false. And of course, if both of them are true, it's going to be true. So now that we've got this, let's look and see what an equivalent statement is and whether we have those. Remember, equivalent statements use the same simple statements such as P or Q or not P and not Q, and they end up having the same truth table. So here is the statement P implies Q, and it had the truth table true, false, true, true. Now I look through here and find where I have that pattern of true, false, true, true, and here's what I find. That the conditional and the contrapositive are the same. So when I go into this, I can say that the conditional is equivalent to the contrapositive. And the contrapositive is equivalent to the conditional. Next, if I'm looking at things, maybe I'll use a different color here. Q implies P is true, true, false, 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 true. So the converse, Q implies P, is true, true, false, false. And the inverse, not P implies not Q, is true, true, false, false. So I've got this TTFT, and I've got this TTFT pattern. And that again tells me that the converse is equivalent to the inverse, and the inverse is equivalent to the converse. So now, let's go and look at an example where this happens. So what I've really got going here is that these two are equivalent to each other. It's a very bad highlighting color. These two are equivalent to each other. I don't know they weren't highlighted. Let me try that one last time. These two were equivalent to each other. And these two are logically equivalent. And what that means is it doesn't matter how I phrase it. These ones that I've highlighted with the similar colors are the same. So we can always rework a sentence that's true one way, and it's going to be true the other way as well. So now let's look at our example down here. Remember, these ones are equivalent. Let me highlight these up, and then we'll talk through this. This one and this one are equivalent. And of course, the two on the middle are also going to be equivalent. So let's talk through this. 
I have my first statement, my P statement. The AETC gave me a scholarship for maths and computer science. The AETC is the Air Education Training Command. It's part of the Air Force. Statement Q is I was in the Air Force. So now let's look at how those statements look and sound like in the English language once I've plugged in those P's and Q's for my previous English translations of just P's and Q's up here. Statement P is AATC gave me a scholarship for maths and CS. Statement Q, I was in the Air Force. So if the AATC gave me a scholarship for maths and computer science, then the requirement on that was that I was in the Air Force. This statement incidentally does happen to be true in real life. We know from our truth table up here that this one and the contrapositive is true. These are the same statements. So I could tell you and we'll go and be chatting in casual conversation and say, the ATC gave me a scholarship for maths and computer science. Then I was in the Air Force. It would be just as true for me to walk up and tell you that if I was not in the Air Force, and the ATC did not give me a scholarship. Notice this converse statement doesn't mean the same thing in our English language. If it did mean the same thing in English, then the truth table would have shown these guys to be the same. Notice they're often the same. I have true true on the top here. I've got true true on the bottom here. It's just in this middle part where I've got some differences. And that's where we're going to see this breaks. This converse statement says, if I was in the Air Force, then the AETC gave me a scholarship for maths and computer science. It sounds true. For me, it kind of is true. I was in the Air Force and I did have a scholarship. But let's see what happens if this breaks. Do you know anyone who was in the Air Force who did not have a scholarship for math and computer science. Well, of course you do. There's plenty of people. The Air Force doesn't give out scholarships in just math and computer science. There's engineering scholarships. There's all sorts of ones. So this statement, this converse statement here, is not a true statement in our world, in the world that we live in. This isn't always true. The same thing right here. If the ATC did not give out a scholarship for math and computer science, then I was not in the Air Force. While this would have been true for me, perhaps, the fact is that plenty of people don't have a scholarship in math and computer science, and they still join the Air Force. There's nothing that stops you from doing that. So these two statements here are logically different from the outer two statements. On the other hand, these inside statements are logically similar to each other. They have the same true, true, false, true pattern. So if you had some sort of magic world where everyone in the Air Force got a scholarship, then it would be true that if you lacked a scholarship, you weren't in the Air Force. So you've got conditional and contrapositive. Usually we see statements in math and logic given to us in the conditional form, if P then Q. Sometimes this format's not so nice, so we turn it into the contrapositive to help us understand what is really going on. So let's go back to that example that I've given before. If you earn a 90% plus in this course, then I will give you an A. That's the conditional. The contrapositive of that is that if you do not, or rather if I, if I do not give you an A in this course, then you did not earn a 90% plus. So these two statements mean the same thing. They are equivalent logically, and by reading both of them together, it helps us sort of see both sides. Okay, yeah, if I get the 90% or higher, I'm going to get the A. If I didn't get the A, that must mean I didn't get the 90% or higher. It helps us see and understand everything. 
notice that the inverse is completely not true. Um, or the, these converse or inverse statements. If I change to if you got an A, then you got a 90% or higher. Because let's look at this one. If you earn, if I give you, I guess, an A, so let's look at this um, inverse. Statement Q is if I give an A, then you earned a 90% or higher. Well, this is not true. This is not a true statement because I've promised already that if you get an 89.45%, I will definitely round that up to an 89.5. Oh wait, no, I think I said 89.49. I will round that up to an 89.5, which will round up to a 90%. That would get you an A, even though you did not earn a 90% or higher. So just because you see yourself having an A doesn't mean you're like, oh, whoo, I scored higher than a 90%. You might have scored an 89.5. So that, that inverse statement there isn't true. All right, I think this wraps it up for uh, logic statements. You want to know this names conditional, converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Remember that conditional and contrapositive are equivalent. They're just flipping the things around. Also remember that converse and inverse are equivalent. They're just flipping things around in a different way. However, the four are not all equivalent together. They follow this pattern. The outer two, conditional and contrapositive, are the same, and converse and inverse are the same. The way I remember that, both conditional and contrapositive have um, CON, and they have, so that, that helps me, but of course, converse also has CON. The deal is that the two Vs go together. The ones that have V's at the very beginning, you've got converse and inverse. And those ones that have verse in them go together. And then the other ones have to go together as well. I'm not saying it's the most awesome memory technique ever. I'm just saying if you see the two verses, they go together. The ones that don't have verses go together then with themselves.